If you are new or early on in your improv journey, then this video is going to be a complete game changer for you. This one concept will make every solo that you play sound a whole lot better. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make any note fit over just about any chord and in doing so, make your improv lines sound really clean, have a really nice flow, a lot of direction to them, and just sound a whole lot more interesting. So what is this magical concept that just about every pro improviser in the world uses? It's called chromatic passing tones. That's it, chromatic passing tones. Before we dive deep into this tutorial, there is a free PDF download. The link is in the description below. And on that PDF, it has all of the licks that we're gonna talk about today using chromatic passing tones. So when you start learning how to improvise, you usually learn a scale and then you figure out or you learn what chord symbol goes along with that scale. And then when you see that chord symbol, you play the notes in that scale. Hopefully you will bring out the chord tones, of course, the one, three, five, and seven, but that's kind of basic improv. Now, when you play like that, if you only play the notes that are in the chord or in the scale, it's gonna sound pretty boring pretty quick just because it's gonna sound like you're improvising only using scales and it's not gonna be interesting. It's not gonna have a flow. When you play like that, you're pretty much just playing the right notes and just playing right notes is not where the secret sauce is when it comes to improvising. Here is an example of me improvising only using the G Mixolydian scale. Of course, the G Mixolydian scale is from G to G with all naturals. So we're gonna lower that F sharp down to an F natural. So I'm gonna improvise using a G Mixolydian scale as if I were playing over a G7 chord, a G dominant seven chord. Now that sounds good. I'm playing all the right notes. I'm using interesting rhythms. So it sounds good, but it is a little boring. It doesn't really flow. It doesn't have hardly any tension and release. It just doesn't have the magic of a really well improvised solo. So the first step to fixing that and making your lines flow and have a lot of direction and sound really good with some tension and release is by adding in chromatic passing tones. When you add in chromatic passing tones, then your solos will have more direction, more tension and release. Everything is just gonna flow and sound way better. So let's talk about how this works using a G Mixolydian scale. Of course, a G Mixolydian scale, again, is a G major scale with a flat or lowered seventh. So we're gonna take that F sharp and lower it to F natural. So the notes are G, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, what's really important is figuring out where your whole steps are. Where you have a whole step is where you can add in that chromatic passing tone. So for example, between a G and an A, there is a half step in between, in between there. You could call it a G sharp or an A flat. For this lesson, I'm gonna call it an A flat just because we're gonna think of it being a flat second. Uh, that's gonna make it way easier and thinking of it as a sharp first because you never alter the first. So we're gonna call this an A flat. So this is what it sounds like if I play this G Mixolydian scale but I add in the passing tone, which is the flat second. So I'm gonna add in a flat. So that is your passing tone, the first passing tone. We're coming down. Now, when it comes to those passing tones, you wanna use that as a go-between note. You don't wanna stop on that note. This is, what would, this is what it'll sound like if I stop on this passing tone. That note really wants to resolve to the one because it is a chromatic passing tone. So I'm just adding more motion into the lines that I'm gonna play when I'm improvising by adding in those chromatic steps. So here is the first lick using that flat two chromatic passing tone. In other words, the A flat in between the G and the A. This one is pretty simple. You're basically just going up a G Mixolydian scale with the passing tone.
It just sounds way less like a scale when you add in those passing tones. Here is another one. So that time I did a chord outline, one, three, five, seven, nine. The nine is what we call the two when it's up on top. And then I do the chromatic passing tone. And it just gives it a really nice flow. So that's all a chromatic passing tone is. It's adding in that half step in between a whole step to give your improv lines a little bit more of a flow, a little more direction, a little more tension and release. Now let's talk about another chromatic passing tone. This time we are gonna play the chromatic passing tone between the F natural and the G. So we're gonna play the major seventh. This is what it sounds like in a scale. Now that scale might sound familiar to you because it has a name that is called the bebop scale. The bebop scale is a major scale or a dominant scale with, oh, a dominant meaning Mixolydian scale, with both sevenths. So the, the flat seven and the major seven. But when we're talking about chromatic passing tones, you don't really need to think about scales. You actually shouldn't think about any of the scales except for the primary scale that you're playing. You just wanna identify some whole steps and put the chromatic passing tone in there. You don't necessarily want to think about it as a scale. So if I take that lick that I just played using the flat two, and swap out that flat two, and this time add in the passing tone between the one and the flat seven, this is what it sounds like. So you don't really need to memorize licks. You just need to be able to identify those whole steps that you can occasionally put in a chromatic passing tone. Here's another one using the major seventh as the chromatic passing tone. Now I kept these licks pretty basic because the whole idea is I want you to hear these chromatic passing tones and make them really easy to identify so I didn't do crazy licks. I just want you to be able to see how this concept works. Now let's alter the lick that we just played and this time use the chromatic passing tone that is the flat third. So we're gonna play the chromatic passing tone that is a B flat, that is in between the A and the B. It sounds like this. And this is what it sounds like in the lick. And here is another example using the flat third passing tone. That gives it so much more of a flow than just using the notes in the G Mixolydian scale. That sounds okay when I don't have any chromatic passing tones in there, but when I do, it just makes it flow. Now would be a great time to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and click the bell for notifications. All right, now let's add in the tritone. The tritone is the half step in between the fourth and the fifth. So you can think of this as a sharp four or a flat five. In the examples, I wrote it as a sharp four. So I'm talking about the C sharp. So it is the passing tone going C, C sharp, D. This is what it sounds like in the scale. And this is what the lick that I just played using the flat third sounds like when I swap out the flat third for the tritone. And that lick, I did keep the passing tone of the flat third in the second measure. So that is something that you definitely need to know is you can use multiple passing tones. You don't just have to use one. However, you don't want to use all of them all at once or it will just sound like a chromatic scale. So you're going to be weaving in and out of these scale ideas, adding in chromatic passing tones from time to time. Here is another tritone chromatic passing tone. And the last one we're gonna do is the flat sixth. Of course, you could also think of this as a sharp five, it doesn't really matter, but we are doing the chromatic passing tone in between the five and the six. And in the case of G Mixolydian, that would be D, D sharp, or E flat as the chromatic passing tone going into E. In the musical examples, I wrote it as a flat six. So we're going D, E flat, E. 
This is what the scale sounds like. Now I'm showing you these passing tones as scales. It's a good idea to practice them as scales in the beginning, but I don't want you to think of them as scales. I just want you to practice it as a scale so that you can isolate the chromatic passing tone that you're working on at that time. Once you feel really good with it, you don't have to practice it as a scale. So take a listen to this lick with the flat six. And here is a second lick using that flat six. That was another example of using two different passing tones in the same lick. So I started off with the flat sixth. And then in the second measure, I used the flat third. So you definitely can combine chromatic passing tones. I actually suggest doing that. It's gonna make everything sound really good and have a great flow. But again, don't add in all of them or it's gonna be a chromatic scale. And that's pretty much the concept for this chromatic passing tone idea. It is a very powerful way to add in a lot of movement and direction into your improvisation lines. It's gonna take boring scales and make them sound a whole lot more interesting. disclosure, you are going to need to work on these passing tones to make them flow in your solos. And over certain chords, certain chromatic passing tones are going to sound better. So the more you practice it, the more you work on it, the more you're going to kind of figure out which ones work there. For example, if you are playing a minor seventh chord, the passing tone that would have the major third usually isn't going to sound that great. A major third over a minor chord usually is not a very good sound. You can get away with it. It's gonna sound okay if you use a passing tone, but that's a good example of one that you're gonna to have to really work on to make that chromatic passing tone sound good. If you'd like to start your journey into the world of improvisation or get to the next level, the next step from wherever you are, I do have a course dedicated to improvisation in my sax school, the Scott Paddock Sax School, that takes you from the very beginning all the way through improvising over complex chord changes. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, click the link in the video description below. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School.